This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning. Coverage you can count on. Hurricane Ian's wrath brought wind, <laughs> rain, and severe flooding all across Central Florida. My house is under the water. The cars, both of the cars are submerged, so this is unbelievable. Overnight, the rescues continued, and now this morning, the road to recovery finally begins. This is going to be a 24-7 operation. It's going to take a lot of work, but Central Florida is going to recover. It's 5 o'clock in the dot. Thank you for joining us this morning. September 30th. I'm Kirsten Delgado. And I'm Alexa Lorenzo. Meteorologist Brian Shields is here too, and we've mm -hmm. been here all together preparing for the storm. And then over the last two days, we've been bringing you that live coverage of Hurricane Ian's wrath. And that live coverage is still going on this morning as we move into the recovery phase. You see here, we have a full team of reporters across Central Florida for you. First though, let's send it over to Eyewitness News certified meteorologist Brian Shields. Brian, the worst is over and mm -hmm. silver lining for those who don't have power this morning. It's really comfortable outside. Yeah, it, it is. Again, unlike uh, Charlie and Irma, where it was super hot after, at least uh, it is a little bit cooler, so you could have those windows open, and more importantly, even dry. A dry pattern working in at least into next week, which is huge for those uh, recovery efforts, the flood uh, threats and everything going on. So Ian itself it working its way up into the Carolinas today. That'll be a third landfall, hit Cuba, southwest Florida, right into us. And again, that third and final landfall as it makes its way up into uh, the Carolinas. Carolinas as we go throughout the day. Now, as we look at some of those wind reports, still kind of fine tuning this. A uh, new Smyrna Beach, there was a gust of 86 miles per hour. Daytona Beach, about 81. Same deal in Melbourne. Inland, we had gusts to about 70 miles per hour in Orlando. Super, uh, uh, again, gusty, uh, but then the flood threat was the big thing. At least we're dry now. Winds northwest, and they'll be relatively gusty as we go throughout the day. Nothing, though, like yesterday. 63 now in Orlando, 62 in Palm Coast, where we're dealing with some of the uh, flooding and recovery as we take you through the day. There will be a lot of sunshine with those numbers that will be working near 80 degrees. Now again, uh, we've been dealing with uh, Ian here, uh, but we want to take a look at uh, Ian elsewhere too. And of course, uh, thinking of our friends down in Southwest Florida, Kirsten again, uh, they're trying to kind of grasp just the the scope of the uh, damage uh, down there. This morning, search and rescue operations and recovery efforts continue. As of right now, though, the death toll stands at 11 people. And these are images from the Coast Guard showing the devastation across the Fort Myers area. And look at this destruction near this bridge that connects an island to the mainland. Now watch as we get a firsthand view of the Coast Guard rescuing a man from his flood at home. This is in Sanibel, and you can see the man handing his cats to the rescuer through a window. And take a look at what's left of this marina at Fort Myers. Hurricane Ian uh, flung boats like toys, leaving them on on dry land. People who didn't evacuate are stunned by the damage. Hurricane Ian also knocked out power to more than two and a half million Floridians, many of them right here in Central Florida. And if you're one of them this morning, rest assured if you're listening to this on a radio that power crews are working as quickly mm -hmm. as they can. And in fact, in the next 15 minutes, we'll take you out live to the staging area where even more crews are getting ready to get to work. New from overnight, we watched as the final coach buses filled with people who were evacuated from an Orange County assisted living facility and a nursing home heading for safety. They were rescued as the floodwaters rose. This was right near Rouse Road and University Boulevard. Channel 9's Alex Walker is live nearby and Alex, the water there is still high this morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, you can see behind me incredible flooding here on Rouse Road in Orlando. Right down this road, uh, there's an assisted living center and a nursing home. The assisted living center is called The Bridge. Then there's Life Care Center of Orlando. All of the residents staff members, they all had to be rescued from that area down this road because of substantial flooding. The National Guard via boats, uh, via buses, via trucks, had to get them out of that. Over 200, like I mentioned, in that process, it took all day. It took 
all night. And we arrived on scene around 10 o'clock last night. And from that point, it still took over four hours to complete that entire rescue. The last bus leaving the gas station where they had the staging area, uh, leaving around 2.30 this morning. We were also on scene this afternoon when the rescues began, both with trucks and with boats captivating video of the residents moving out of their homes. And this was a long process, like I mentioned. With the elevators shut down, the residents had to be carried down the stairs to rescue. As you can imagine, that takes a very long time. And I spoke to the daughter of two of the residents, Kathy Willoughby. As you can imagine, a frustrating situation as you just sit and wait for that rescue to happen. I think it's been more scary for my father because they don't really understand what's going on. They're not really grasping the outside because they've been inside and all they've seen is what's out the window and what's been reported on the news. Kathy's parents uh, were taking, uh, taken, along with the rest of the residents of the bridge, that assisted living center, down to Port St. Lucie. They will live there until it's safe to return here to live. That process will likely take weeks. She said she's going to drive down, meet up with her parents, make sure they're okay, get them some safe clothes, some dry clothes as they continue to live down there. But like I said, this process to get them back here, it's going to take a long, long time. And in the meantime, I uh, hope they're all safe and sound down there in Port St. Lucy. But for now, Alex Walker, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Alex, thank you. More than 100 residents at a skilled nursing facility in Orange County are waking up out of their homes this morning. Yeah, they had to be rescued after their apartment complex flooded yesterday. It was a truly incredible moment that we brought you live. Over and over, we saw Orange County fire rescue crews help people out of the Avant at Orlando. They were then taken out on boats and what looked like stretchers and put onto Lynx buses to be brought to a safe location. Oh, you see all the water right there? Yeah. They can't get through, wheelchairs can't get through, so we have to roll them out, put them on the vehicles, and then I have vehicles lined up, 16 drivers here to assist. The fire chief told us the facility did prepare for the storms with sandbags, but it just wasn't enough to keep the water out. Meantime, Volusia County was pounded by Ian's wind and rain, and right now, uh, people there are under a curfew until 7 this morning. That's because the damage is so bad out there, and Channel 9's Demi Johnson has been out there on the coast for days now looking at all that damage. Demi, you're at the Nidona Beach Pier now. What's it look like there? So we couldn't actually get all the way to the pier. That's because it's closed because the storm washed part of it away. We don't know how bad it is yet. It's too dark to see, but we do know part of it's gone and we can see part of it here. These are chunks of the pier washed up on shore and we've seen that all over the area. We can see things like this, this lifeguard chair right here. We saw one of those pushed all the way up into the streets of Daytona Beach. The water a little calmer today. It's still getting close uh, up to the beach side, but we can see more of the beach this morning. We're going to go now to some video that we shot yesterday so you can see what caused all of this damage. Again, 80 mile an hour wind gusts at some point. It was rough out there. We saw debris flying around up in the air. It almost looked like a tornado. It was throwing things everywhere, throwing water everywhere. The winds were absolutely insane. We saw damaged businesses, damaged homes, and we do know that there were also several flooding um, rescues throughout Daytona Beach, but the bridge is closed, so we haven't been able to get over there and see all of it so far this morning. But as things get lighter throughout the day, we hope to be able to show you some of that flooding. Hopefully some of it starts to recede again as things cool off. And again, we do want to remind people you're still under a curfew until 7 a.m. Again, we haven't seen anyone out on the streets today, which is good because there is still a lot of debris on the streets. It looks like they cleaned some of it up overnight, but things are still kind of rough out here. I mean, it's not windy by any means like it was yesterday, but we can still see the tops of trees moving around. So it's probably not totally safe for people to be out yet until uh, crews can get out and survey some of the damage. For now, live in Daytona Beach, Demi Johnson, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Demi, thank you. You've done a great job out there. And of course, we showed you images like this of the Daytona Beach Pier as Ian rolled through. When that happened, you saw there 
the camera just turned over. And you see the flags whipping there early yesterday morning when that camera turned upside down. Brian Shields recording wind gusts there as high as 80 miles per hour. And you heard Demi mention the bridges closed in that area. They will remain closed until the Florida Department of Transportation is able to head that way and inspect the bridges before reopening. Over to Flagler County, the countywide curfew will stay in effect from 8 p.m. till 7 a.m. daily until further notice. If you ignore the order, you can face up to 60 days in jail and $500 in fines. County officials don't want to do that. They want everyone to follow this. It's for your protection, and they will lift it as soon as possible. Back in Seminole County, like most of Central Florida, the damage and flooding devastated most of Sanford. Take a look here. You see Estate Road 46. It just looks like a lake. Seminole County Rescue had to close off the road after towing many cars out of the water. Still, though, some chose to ignore the closures. You can see even one car driving right through that caution tape. And if you live in our or near Winter Springs, there's a boil water notice in effect there. The city officials are reporting multiple water main breaks and is advising everyone to boil water before using it. Now today, Seminole County will hold a press conference at 11 a.m. City officials will discuss the response efforts in the aftermath of the storm. As you may make your way out to get maybe to Publix as it reopens this morning, you have to be aware so much is still shut down across Central Florida roads. You see right here we have flooding, we have closures because of down trees and power lines, some of those hazards as well. The turnpike is back open after about a 15 mile stretch was closed for significant flooding yesterday. But everywhere you look, you have portions of streets closed right here in Winter Springs over in Oviedo. Those are just small stretches, but in some areas we have made your intersections closed or some of the ramps right here. This is 528 and State Road 520 right in this area as well. Busy, busy intersection. We have Curry Ford Road near uh, Goldenrod Road shut down. And then again with those ramps, this is a major closure. Those on and off ramps closed on Volusia County as well. Now, right now, recovery begins across Florida. Coming up, the billions of dollars in damage and the help now on the way from out of the state. Yeah, plus some much needed relief coming for homeowners later this morning. Coming up, which power company these linemen belong to for a widespread effort to turn the lights back on. And Ian will make its final landfall today up in South Carolina, right near Myrtle Beach, kind of splitting Myrtle Beach and Charleston. I want to show you why the surge was even extra bad in Southwest Florida as this pulled on shore. It's 5-11.